So this video is to help students of IS 566 get their virtual machine set up on Azure Education. So I'm going to start off by coming to Azure Education. Here's the URL. Azure.Microsoft.com slash en-us slash education. And I'm going to choose over here, uh, Explore Azure for Students. Now I'm already logged in. Uh, with my uh, to my Microsoft account using my net ID at byu.edu uh, So when I choose activate now, it's going to try to use those credentials to see if I really am a student so It'll be a separate verification process And it will take uh, about 30 seconds or so to verify Oh, not so long this time now this is some more information. This is uh, first name, last name, email address for important notifications. Uh, what, are, what we should put here. Uh, phone number next. I agree to whatever they're saying. Wonderful. Confirming my information. And it looks like I'm in. So I'm here at the education overview. So I'm going to come back here to home. I'll create a resource. And that will be uh, compute, make a virtual machine, so we we'll want to make sure that a subscription is your Azure for Students subscription. Depending on how you're logged in and where you're logged in, there may be other options here, so just make sure you're using the Azure for Students. Uh, and then we'll need a resource group. You probably don't have one here yet. Uh, so we'll create a new one. I'm just going to go ahead and call mine IS-566. So now I'll scroll down to give my virtual machine a name. I just want, um, students, I want you to name this your actual name. So I'm going to put here my name, gov-allen. Uh, region, the default probably is okay here. But I'm going to get something a little closer to us. I'll do Central US. Uh, availability options. No infrastructure redundancy required. That should be OK. Uh, Ubuntu 18.4 uh, long term stable. That will be good as well. Azure Spot Instance. We'll just accept the default on that one. Uh, now, the size. This $81 a month is going to eat up your $100 of uh, free uh, usage too fast. So let's change the size. Let's reduce this down a little bit. I'm going to sort this by cost, and the low end is going to work okay for us here. So we only need one gig of RAM. So it looks like this is going to be our best shot. So that's $9.30. We'll only need it for a couple of months. That'll still give you plenty of capacity for other projects for the year. So I'll select that one and select. All right, we'll set up an SSH public key uh, in a later video. For now, let's go ahead and create um, a username and a password. The username I want you to create is student, and that's what you'll do all of your work under so that when I attach onto your machine and uh, look for what you've done, I'll be able to find your work. Then you'll choose a password that you'll be able to remember for that account. Okay, so now we have some firewall rules here. Um, let's go ahead and we will allow these ports that are selected here. The only one we need is going to be SSH. That's how we're going to connect onto these machines. So the defaults here will be fine as well. So now I'll go ahead and review and create. 
So I can see that this is going to cost me 12 and a half cents an hour to run. Um, this looks okay. I'm going to go ahead and click create. And that'll take a little bit to actually build and deploy. So it looks like my deployment is now successful. I'll go to the resource. Okay, so I'm going to connect onto this with an SSH client. So I'm going to copy the public IP address. Uh, I'm going to open up PowerShell. If you're on a Mac, just open up Terminal. So I'll just type SSH for my SSH client. And now I'm going to put my username, student, at the IP address of my server. Now, this may prompt you to type YES if this is the first time you're connecting to the machine. So go ahead and do that, and then enter the password that you created. Uh, and then we're authenticated. So that should be what it takes to get us set up.